Here's why I bought the Bamboo Labs H2D now, despite the fact the H2C is launching imminently. Making is in our DNA. I'm not getting into a debate here on Bamboo versus Creality versus Prusa. That's not what this is about. People are always gonna pick their favorites, whether it's Canon or Nikon, iPhone or Android, VHS versus Betamax old person. It is what it is. All of these machines nowadays are pretty similar. I've been really, really happy with the Bamboo Labs X1C. It's just done absolutely everything I've asked of it and it's completely reignited my passion for this hobby. And it was about three months ago that I decided that I wanted to get another printer. The H2 series of printers were being released and the H2D then for me was an absolute slam dunk. Just as I was about to go ahead with the H2D, Bamboo Labs, to their credit, announced that they were planning to launch the H2C by the end of the year. And the H2C, with its fancy Vortec tool head changing system, it looks incredible. And I'm really excited to see when that launches how well does it work? How fast is it? How quickly can you change filament? What sort of flexibility is that going to give you for multi-filament prints? That's really exciting and I can't wait to see it launched. And of course, everyone's very interested to know at what price point is that going to launch because actually all of the new machines that Bamboo Labs have launched this year have been really competitive on pricing to the extent that the new P2S that launched a couple of weeks ago is basically the X1C killer but it's cheaper and it's so competitively priced. So I've been thinking about it for the last few months but then finally just decided and I have bought the H2D laser combo, the 10 watt laser combo and here's why. So really it boils down to three things. The first major requirement of the new machine for me was the build volume. Having the bigger bed and the bigger enclosure to be able to do bigger prints, so literally just having the bed so you can make bigger things. But also I've been doing quite a lot of batch processing. So I've got lots of small items that I'm printing lots of and having a bigger bed will just enable me to print more and it'd be more efficient. And things like I'm looking at getting into Gridfinity because I need to sort out my workshop so I'm going to have to print off lots and lots of the Gridfinity panels or something like it, you know, these hexagon wall panels. And so to be able to print big panels and do layer stacking, that's one of the key key requirements. The second key requirement is actually just analysing the nature of the prints that I tend to do. I am not using the X1C to very often print really complicated multicolor prints. Really, the majority of my multicolor prints are actually two colors. So I'm really doing more engineering focused prints. So the dual head nozzle of the H2D for me is perfect for that. I've still got the flexibility of the AMS. And quite frankly, I am not printing huge volumes of stuff. Like I'm not printing constantly. Although the poop, I don't really like it, it's wasteful. Actually, filament is pretty cheap nowadays. So the cost of the wastage is not a big deal. The speed of the Vortex system, the speed at which you could do complex multicolor prints. Now that is quite interesting because certainly multicolor prints using the AMS with all the wastage and the poop, they are slow, we know that. So that would have been one reason to go for it. And actually one of the key things that I'm getting into is using more exotic materials. And so carbon fiber infused nylon, glass fiber infused nylon are the sorts of materials that I really wanna get into, more so than having real flexibility to do lots of multicolor prints. And that's just the nature of the 3D printing I do. The H2D really ticks those boxes. The other features of the H2D are really interesting such as the 10 watt laser engraver, the cutter, the vinyl cutter. I'm not really sure what the plotter is going to do, but I'm kind of interested. I've got an Atomstack 20 watt laser in my tiny workshop, which I use for cutting and engraving wood. So I'm not planning to do that much of that, but what I am planning to do projects where I want to do engraving of more interesting materials. And although I'm reasonably happy with Lightburn and I've got some upgrades to the Atom Stack coming that will hopefully improve what I can do with it, I'm kind of excited by the way the Bamboo Labs camera operates to do your positioning of the materials in your laser engraving bed. And so those are the three key things that led me to this decision. And also it's backed up by the fact that if I get to a point where actually I really want an H2C, Bamboo Labs have said that the H2D is upgradable. 
So if you wanted to, you can upgrade an H2D to become an H2C. We don't know when the H2C is actually going to ship. Bamboo Labs have promised it will be the end of the year. We don't know what price point it's going to launch at. And also, let's face it, it's a brand new system. There are probably going to be some issues with it in the early days. We can, ex we can expect there to be some issues. One of the other things, which is not exactly a reason, but having the H2D kind of makes this more possible. I bought a 0.2mm nozzle and a cold plate and these things because I wanted to actually model some, some smaller stuff. Nozzle replacement on the X1C actually is a bit fiddly. It's not a nice plug and play job like it is on some of their other printers. You have to unscrew some stuff and plug it in and get cables in. And what that led me to was a situation where actually probably the majority of the printing I want to do is 0.4mm nozzle, but my machine's now tied up with the 0.2mm nozzle and, I, and swapping back and forth wasn't straightforward. And so again, it's a kind of a loose justification that by having H2D to become my main printer that will handle the majority of the work I can do, then actually I can set up the X1C with, this, with that smaller nozzle. Obviously, I'm really nervous the H2C is going to launch any day, but I, you know, I'm reasonably comfortable with my decision for all the reasons I've just gone through. I'm excited to unbox it uh, and see what we can do with this awesome, awesome machine. So we've been trying to work out where to put this. I mean, it's pretty big, right? And I think the best place is in here because although I don't really want to block this window, um, I think actually being able to vent out the window from the back of the machine makes most sense. There it is set up. The unboxing was typically bamboo. Everything was quite fun, really well packaged, just taking out the screws and lubing up the bits and bobs and that was all fine. And so the setup, nice and easy, just add it to the Bamboo Handy app on my phone. That adds it to my account. Run the calibration, that's about 30 minutes. Everything had firmware updates, I've done all that. I think it's there, it's good to go. It should be uh, hopefully about to print. I need to build a proper base because that one's far too wobbly. You can see it wibbling all over the place. So. Uh, sometime in the next couple of weeks, I'll hopefully build a nice bench for it that's nice and sturdy. Probably the only thing so far that I comment on as being a bit annoying, there is no internal SD card slot. So in order to get time lapse, you have to chuck a USB drive in there, in the top. And it's an old USB-A style stick. And I just find that a bit odd, because the X1C, I mean that had an, an SD card slot that you could pop a card into. So having this stick, literally here, sticking out the top, that just seems a bit budget to me. Uh, I suppose the other thing that's perhaps a little bit annoying, you've got two nozzles, but the AMS2 has only got one output. So it's not like you can feed two out of the AMS into the two nozzles. So you feed one of the extruders from the AMS and then you feed the other extruder from either the external spool or a second AMS. Oh, it's actually printing. It's actually, oh, finally, it's printing. Oh my goodness. So there we have it. One X1C, one H2D, two benches, printed very nicely. Possibly the red is a bit better, but I think that's because it's a nicer PLA, whereas that's some fairly cheap eSun stuff. That definitely printed really fast though compared to the X1C. Very cool, very good. Two 3D printers. The world is an oyster. I shall see you again. Bye. The only problem I've got now is what I'm going to do with this massive pile of boxes because um, I haven't got anywhere to store that and they tell you not to throw it away.